Good morning, teens. How is everybody? Hang on, let me fix this light. Two, three, yeah. We were only halfway bright. Now we can see what we're doing. Good morning, teens. We're on much earlier than expected because Mia failed to prepare herself properly. Oh, I gotta put this back in the fridge. Um, Mia failed to prepare herself properly for her dance competition today. So now we have to hustle out there two hours earlier than expected because we have to bring her a costume that she uh, needs and there's a cutoff time to get it to her. So we're going live earlier and John is going to help me because I do not have contacts in. How are you, Bubba's, this I'm morning? Good. I'm good. Oh, there's our other Bubba's. Over here protecting us. Okay, I've already done my pre-makeup routine. Setting spray, then primer, then setting spray. Today, we are really going to talk most specifically about hooded eyes. So, <clears throat> but I still have to get the rest of my face on. So, I'm going to do that really quickly. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to put in the comments, if you are a hooded eye girl, I want you to put hooded in the comments, okay? Okay. I have hooded eyes, obviously, extremely hooded eyes. They're not even hooded the same way. That's not a normal in case you happen to be hooded eyed and wonder, um, like, am I weird? No, sister, you are not. But today we're focusing on giving the best tips we possibly can from one hooded eye sister to another um, for you guys, okay? I try to write down a few notes to myself just to remember, but... We, you know, we do this every day because we've, li we've lived with these all of our lives. So we uh, put eyeshadow on hooded eyes every single day. <clears throat> so I feel like I could tell you, but I just wanted to make sure there were a few things that I didn't forget. First and foremost, I'm going to put on eye primer. If you're a hooded eye girl, you're going to have to shop differently for eye primers than anybody else. Um, for other people, a nice, smooth, silky eye primer might be really good. Um, for a hooded eye girl, you're going to want to find an eye primer that's got a bit of grip to it um, and find an eye primer that's kind of got a waxy texture. I like to apply mine by lifting my brow. Uh, let First of all, let's talk about, let's talk about really quickly, sorry, John, um, hooded eyes really quickly. Let me get a really small ended brush so I can show you. Do you see that my lid is... I call it fat and it hangs over and my crease is way down here. Okay. That is any, a hooded eye could be one of two things, a droopy lid that hangs over and therefore creates the crease lower, or it could be a lid up here that protrudes out over a little too much and therefore obscures the natural crease that you have. So if you do that, you can look and see if that's, if you have a hooded eye. Uh, sorry, John, go ahead. John? Yeah? I said, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Could you take oh. those earphones out of your ear? Thank you. Hand them to me right now and pass that phone to me. Today is not the day we don't have time for all this. <clears throat> your sister's given us the ability to not have the luxury of time today. What am I going to use with this? Give it what, to am, me. what am I going to Just use with this? Just give it to me. Thank you. Parenting. So joyous. Okay, I'm a, go ahead and read comments. I'm applying this eye primer all over my lid with a brush because I don't want to get it on my lashes. Go ahead, John. Karen Anderson, Karen Anderson says, good morning. Good morning, Hi. Karen. And Leslie says, good morning to you and John. Good morning, Leslie. How are you this morning? And Brenda says, good morning, Tara and John. Good morning, Brenda. How are you? Okay, I'm putting on primer. I specifically shop for a primer that's got a bit of wax to it. I like a tacky primer because I have hooded eyes. Um, again, if you don't have hooded eyes, a silkier primer might do, but a tackier, waxier based primer is going to be a better option for you if you have hooded eyes because it helps to prevent transfer. Eye primer obviously helps grab the eyeshadow, maintain the color, and keep it from moving. So when you have a hooded eye, the reason why this is important is because typically there's a lot of extra skin here. So a lot of potential for moving around, creasing, getting up underneath that crease right there, and development of moisture and oil, grease, or whatever you want to call it, underneath that crease and then for therefore breaking your makeup and moving it around a little bit. If you choose an eye primer that has a bit of tack to it, 
Um, it's, it might take you a little bit to get used to, um, but it will be your best friend for a hooded eyed girl. Try not to find anything that's smooth to the touch or silky to the touch. That's not going to help you. It's not going to hold everything in place and prevent things, prevent oil from breaking through and breaking your makeup. Okay. So, um, that's tip number one is a, an eye primer that's got a bit of grip and wax to it. Okay. Um, what else? Do we have anything? April Shanks says, hi, hey, Taran John. Hey, hey April. Says, Good morning, John. Good morning. Do we have any girls that are hooded eyed that are watching right now? Karen um, said, said that she was hooded. Oh, okay. See this? I'm pretty hooded. I mean, I'm seriously hooded and I'm seriously considering that surgery. But I also like to apply, you can apply your eye primer with your finger. I'm a bit sloppy and wind up getting it on my lashes. And because as a hooded eyed girl, I'm really looking for a primer with way more tack and grip than, an, than another kind of girl would need. If I were to get it on my lashes, it gets a little clumpy and it's a little bit hard to remove. Hence, the reason why I like to use a flat brush. This is a traditional concealer brush. I don't like it for concealer, but I love it for eye primer application. Um, so I like to, I feel like I have a little bit more control and I get less on my eyelashes when I use a brush like that. So another little added tip. Okay, uh, let's pick. First, let me do a, a bit of foundation. I'm going to do it really quickly. I'm pretty sure that I am taffeta again and not... I'm taffeta again. I'm going to do <clears throat> uh, just a really quick basic foundation, nothing major, uh, but I do need foundation on my face. Yeah, I'll probably, probably this a little bit in between. One, two, three. I'm doing three drops of taffeta of Serum Plus foundation, and I'm going to do one drop of satin and see how that looks. <clears throat> and then we'll get that on. We're really not going to do much. Actually, I'll do two drops of satin. Um, we're not going to do much foundation. I am going to be doing something that I don't... O-M-G. I pressed the button too much and way too much came out. Ooh. I can't stand it. I'm do that. Um, okay. Well, let's mix it all in. See what we come up with. Might be having to make some adjustments. Okay. Oh, 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 it, might be a, it might have worked out anyway. What? Is everything working out for us today? Possibly. Okay. I already did my pre-makeup routine. So here we're going to go in. And we're going to get, oh no. It's too much. I put too much on the brush. That's okay. We're going to blend it out. And I'm just gonna get really quick foundation, pressing in and buffing out, and just get a little bit of foundation on avoiding my under eye. I'm gonna try to do half my face so y'all can see the difference with the Serum Plus foundation. It's super light and super thin, so it doesn't have to look like, it doesn't have to look like makeup, although this isn't the best color for me. But y'all know we worked that out in the end. Bring that down the neck. For the finish purposes, ignore the color. But for the finish purpose, look how it still looks like skin. It still moves with my skin. It doesn't crack or anything. I'm literally pulling out my skin and the foundation stays in place and literally moves with my skin. David says, good morning, you got John up early. Well, she didn't really. It was Max who woke me up with his constant barking and he couldn't, and I couldn't go back to sleep. Yeah, so. it was Max. It was Max. Okay. Um, good morning, Debbie. Yeah, and we're up a little bit, or, I mean, we're not up a little bit early. I've been up since five, but um, the plan wasn't to do this until, uh, 10 30 or 11 actually um so that we could leave at 12 to go to mia's dance competition she doesn't dance till two but it is over an hour away or it's about an sorry about an hour away so we um were needing to uh 
adjust our time schedule because after she was dropped off today, this morning at 6.15 this morning, she notified us that she left part of her costume here. And that it needed to be at the school an hour away by noon, which I can't do a makeup live at 11 and be an hour away at noon. So we've had to adjust our whole schedule, even though I adjusted our team call, my makeup live and beauty school today already around her schedule um, to be able to accommodate all of my obligations to her and to here. Uh, so we had already strategically planned that. Now all that's out the window. Someone was swearing about it earlier this morning. Yeah, that's okay. I, I can be upset about it. She told me, she texted me to tell me um, not to be upset by it because that's not going to change anything. Oh, really? Oh, really? Thank you for your insights, Mia Danzaro. Oh, by the way, my black widow brush is missing. My eyeshadow brush, the one that I love so much. You know, the one that I use every single day and love so much. It's missing. It's missing, y'all. Missing. I went in her room and I cannot find it. We're going to use a different color um, concealer underneath our eye. Today, we're going to go right here and right here. Um, this is a yellow underbased color. It's probably going to be a little bit more drastic than what you guys have been use, seeing me use. The other color I use is yellow underbased, but this one's a little bit more yellow. So I feel like I need a little bit more color correction today. So I'm going with a little bit more, taking this down and then out like this. And then I will use the, pu the puffier side to kind of blend it in. Bringing this, let's see, right here. And starting to really kind of take some shape right there. Okay, two dots on the inner corner and two dots on the outer corner. So yeah, like the whole day has to be rearranged because she prioritized Netflix last night over preparing for a very important day today. Um, but we have to rush in and save the day, see? That's what's gotta happen. If it were just her, I wouldn't be making those accommodations and I would let her suffer the full consequences of her actions. Unfortunately, she's a part of a team. Um, it is their last competition. So we have to, you know, we're gonna have to have the conversation about her obligation to her team. Um, her, her lack of preparation for herself impacts her family more than just her, right? So, and I think that's what my kids often have difficulty comprehending is that if other people have to make adjustments in their lives to, to, com to accommodate or adjust to whatever choices you did or did not make, then your choices are impacting others, not just yourself. And that when we live in a family unit, we function as a family unit, all of that has to be taken into consideration, not just your needs. Does that make sense? I think that's pretty common for all teenagers. So I'm, I'm not saying in any way, shape or form that my teens are any different than anybody else's. I think that's pretty common. I'm going to take what happens to be left over. I'm going to trace over the brow here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because on a hooded eye, the brow is very important. On every face, the brow, brow is very important. But on a hooded eye, it is exceptionally important. Okay. And we're going to talk about that in a second. John, what are you doing, bub? John? Bub? I did not want to be around you when you were talking about your children. Bad mouthing, bad mouthing them. I'm not bad mouthing yes, you. you are. No, I'm yes, not, you are. honey. You were. No, no. I and he, did you hear me say I don't think that's yes, exclusive to I my did, children. I think still, teenagers are all like that. Did you? It sounded like it was targeted. It's not targeted, honey. Ooh, this has a little too much wetness on it. Um, no, it's not targeted. But that is a lesson that I think that a lot of teenagers have to learn. 
Okay, do we have some comments? John? Yes. Nicole says the brush fairy has it. I didn't raise, da raise daughters, but I'm making up for it with two granddaughter daughters. The seven year old is already trying to get in my makeup. Oh my gosh, Nicole. Oh my god. That's hilarious. The brush fairy. That's what I'm gonna call it. The brush fairy. That's a good that's a good one. I'm gonna steal that, Nicole. Nicole I'm also said, yep, the family unit is also a team. It's very common. We have to teach from day one to think about the whole and not just about the eye. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just getting right up. Susan says, hi, guys. Hey, Susan. How are you? Okay. So when I highlighted, I did put a little bit of emphasis right here. And when I highlighted, I did put a little bit of, I put one dot out here and I moved that outwards from the corner of the eye up to my brow. And that is for lifting. Those are specific to, um, I would say mature eyes and hooded eyes both. So that can be beneficial for both. Look at the glow that I'm starting to create from the light down the center of my face, the finish of the foundation that I selected. Now we're going to um, do a little bit of contouring too. I've been loving some cream contour, so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, let me clean my glasses so I can see the bottoms of these things and figure out what color. I've got two colors that I typically use for contour. We might have to use both of them today. Yeah, we probably will. We'll use both of them. So I have Suede and Georgette. They're two totally different um, shades. One is deeper than the other, obviously. But we're gonna start with, with Suede. I'm gonna put a little bit right here and a little bit right here, and then we're gonna deepen with Georgette, okay? Um, suede, I can take a little bit above here. I'm not gonna do too much. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna do this little section right here and right here. We're gonna come down the nose. Right here. We're going to constant. I'm going to try to whip through this really quickly. So that we can get to the hooded eye section. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to use this and buff it out. This is the other powder concealer brush that I have. And I'm just going to take my cream. I love the cream. I'm going to go back right here and come over. Uh, now, I'm doing this on top of my foundation today. When you've seen me do this previously, you've seen me put foundation over the top of it. We still can correct when we're not doing underpainting, okay? So, don't feel like you can't, uh, don't feel like you, you don't have a fix in the bag. The draw to underpainting is that you can easily correct anything that looks crazy. In fact, you want it to look crazy beforehand and then um, make it not look crazy with the foundation. Debbie asks, John, did you see my comment? Yes, I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we speak in truths here. That's what we do. And it's not about bashing, John. Somebody's being a little sensitive. Okay. I just woke up. You did just. <laughs> Uh, sorry, bad mood because okay, I want here. Come here. Let's hug it out. Not now. Yes, now. Not now. Yeah, yes. No. Come on. Come on. Give your mommy a hug. Let's put make it all better. Oh my goodness. You see, that's why we shouldn't have done this. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Do y'all see, okay, see what Max does? Max is barking on us because we're hugging. He does this all the time. Stop walking on my iPad, Max. This is not good. Max gets all disturbed when I hug John. He's like, that's my John. Don't be hugging him. He really does. See, I still look a little crazy. That's okay. 
we're still going to do, I'm actually going to take this lighter color in suede. Where's suede? Right here. Um, and I'm going to use the blush, the brush to apply. Did y'all, y'all saw how he did that, right, Max? I'm just going to basically touch this. And a much more natural way. Oh my God, what is that? He knocked over the stand. Stop. A much more natural Leslie way. Leslie says Max needs hugs too. My pups are barking and <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was watching someone the other day and they were like, Alexa, play da 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 And my Alexa played it. Susan says, John, you're awesome. Ha ha, Max, you're funny. He is awesome. So I'm just literally using, if you're afraid to apply cream contour because you're afraid it's not going to blend out. In fact, this is not totally blended, so don't freak out. But if you are if you want to do a more natural look, natural doesn't necessarily mean go with a lighter color. It typically means a different um, application process. And using a brush directly to the product and then to the skin is probably the easiest way to get a more natural look. Um, especially if you're learning, just learning. It's fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit darker. Oh, wait. One more thing. I've been trying this. I saw somebody do it. Oh, and I saw somebody do this, like a triangle here and here. Like, Make your chin look more pointy? I, I think so. And then they did this, but I've already done that. So uh, let's buff that out. You know that contour? I don't know. I'm just trying it, y'all. I don't know if I like it. Still seems a bit I, noticeable. Yeah, it is a little bit Especially noticeable. Especially from the front. Like face on. Yeah, it is. But that's what we're not done yet. <clears throat> Debbie have, says, are you, are you still on for the team meeting? It would be fine if you need to cancel. We are on for the team meeting. Um, that's one of my little obligations today, Debbie, that we have to... I, that's why I'm going live earlier than normal. So see how I'm deepening with a little bit darker contour right here. And then I can do just one dot here. Jamie says, way to go, John. Right um, well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. I don't know what you're congratulating me for, but <laughs> thank you. And then buffing that out. So a little bit more fierce contour right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could do a little deeper contour here or on the tip of my nose. But it's already pretty severe. But let's go in with our blending bud and start to press in and make things seem a little bit more neutralized and natural. So that it's not noticeable as John mentions. And then if we can't, by pressing it in, get it to blend the way we want it to look. Knowing the counter, says Jamie. Knowing what, babe? Uh, Are you talking to me? No, no, Jamie says knowing the counter for like, congratulating me, I think she meant contour. Oh, knowing the contour. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take this lighter color. And Dana go. said, how? Dana says, how is driving going, John? And did you name, did you decide on the name of your truck? John, answer the question. I'm dying to know. Um, I'm going to take my kabuki brush and just tame this down a little bit because we're just... Against Bree's better judgment, I, I have decided to name it Cerulean. <laughs> because Brie said that she did not like that name. She, yeah, she Brie did say she didn't like that because she didn't know what it means. I'm I'm actually shocked that you knew that word, like because you came up with that word. Remember in my stories, mm -hmm. and I um, I'm just taking the kabuki brush with what we've got and just going right in between the two to soften that line right there. I'm gonna do that on the nose too. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean, that you just pulled that out of your brain is so amazing to me. Oh, yeah. She didn't mean knowing the contour. Yeah. Okay, Mar so how do we feel? Marissa Much says, better, right? Marissa says, hey, pretty lady. 
Marissa is that passionate? oh marissa what are you doing sister what are you doing okay let's set this john can you look at the screen and tell me if it if it still looks too obvious um no and where i wouldn't say, I wouldn't say not like it's definitely it's definitely less obvious right uh-huh does it need more blending um around the nose perhaps is is are you are you saying that you're gonna have to you're going to be blending around the nose i'm asking you if it needs it since you're i think it's fine i think it's totally fine let's go ahead and set um translucent setting powder kind of deadens it too so if it's a little crazy it's a little crazy that's all that's all okay a little bit of setting powder i like to knock off all the excess and put it into the top to the lid of the jar then i can go in it as Nobody i need says, to Dave says, okay, then I feel like I better get up and do something with myself so I cannot look like death. You don't have to do anything yourself with, with yourself, Debbie. I, my original plan was to be on the team call um, without makeup, makeup on and do my makeup afterwards. But the reason or my schedule has changed for my makeup live is because Mia forgot her stuff. And now we have to leave two hours earlier. You should have done a little compromise for you. Do your makeup while you're on the team meeting. No, I'm coaching. I'm privately coaching my team on the team meeting. That's what I'm doing. That I don't want to be distracted by putting makeup on. Fair enough. Plus, I was supposed to teach hooded eyes today, and I can't teach hooded eyes if I'm doing my makeup on my team call where I'm coaching. Okay, a little bit of blush. Um, Sisterly is in order. I've been rocking cream blush like nobody's business. Um, that's surreal. Hang on, I gotta find Sisterly. Oh, here she is. Um, I've been rocking cream blush like nobody's business. We're gonna get back to powder, okay? Obviously, she's a fan fave because um, she's completely, the pan is almost totally exposed. I have a backup, don't worry. We're going to apply this really quickly, and then we're going to get to these eyes. We're going to really start diving into my hooded eye tips, okay? Um, from one hooded eyed girl to another, I'm trying to give you guys some tips that are functional and not just like crazy. And let me just be very clear. I'm doing hooded eye tips for daytime hooded eyes, not night. I can do something totally separate for a nighttime look for hooded eyes for you guys, but I feel like YouTube and Instagram and all that is filled with all sorts of dramatic looks for hooded eyes, but not anything really natural for hooded eyes. And y'all know, I'm going to a dance competition. We don't have to... Look all out there. Yeah. Look at how sisterly is just... The best. The best. I love her with all of my heart, clearly, since I've almost worn her completely out. Okay, so now we can get to our eyes. So my very first tip was an eye primer, and you're gonna shop for an eye primer differently than normal people if you have hooded eyes. If you missed that, go to the beginning of the tutorial now on the replay the and do part that. Of the live. What? Now it's time for the longest part of the live. Um, if, if you, uh, missed my first couple of tips, go ahead. You can watch the replay. Um, okay. So let's talk about eyeshadow selections. Um, oh no. First, let's talk about eyebrows. Eyebrows are super important. Do not forget the brow. Do not leave your brow naked, especially if you have hooded eyes. Y'all know I'm a strong advocate for a brow anyway. I think every single face needs a some sort of brow. I'm not saying that you have to have a strong brow, but what I am saying is that a hooded eye typically um, uh, lacks length on the lid, right? Mm, lilacs is good morning. Hey, Lily. Um, a Lindsay hooded eye, go ahead, sorry. And Lindsay Bow says, dance competition, how fun. Is hey, Lindsay. Good morning. Yeah, it's for her high school dance team. Um, so a hooded eye typically doesn't have as much real estate, um, obviously on the lower part of the lid, but the upper part of the lid too. So the shape of your brow can make a huge difference. Um, if 
so creating a little bit more of an arch also creates a little bit more of an illusion of lid space. So, um, and not having a defined brow really, okay, really kind of um, allows the hood to fade into nothingness. So what we're going to try to do is um, give us, give ourselves a little bit of shape and definition at the top of the brow. Hooded eyes lack definition in general. So we're going to try to give a framework to the top part of the eye, bringing attention to a really nice brow can also reduce attention to the hood on top of it. We're going to do other things to reduce attention there, but the first step is creating a brow. Now, I am going to actually use my brow, um, I was going to say my brow um, serum, but this is actually my lash serum that I have been using on my brows while I wear makeup. I cannot believe I have not thought of this sooner. And I can tell you my brows already feel a little bit healthier. This is, and let me just say the makeup that I use is clean. So it, um, it falls within what's considered the highest standards. The EU standards are the highest standards um, because they ban lots of toxins, um, things that are carcinogenics and all that kind of stuff. They ban over 1,400 of them. The United States bans about, I think, 14 or 13, um, under 20 for sure. Um, and the EU bans, um, over 1300 so there's a stark difference when you're talking about what you're putting on your face on your skin your skin absorbing it um your yeah, hair is absorbing it and all that it, was, it, it felt nice outside it does feel nice um i'm going to use this br brow spoolie to kind of brush back my baby hairs too just a little bit so i like to brush through with the brow spoolie after i've applied my lash serum it's an all natural based lash uh lash serum so now we, we are going to take a brow powder if you want to do a pencil actually i could probably do a micro pencil let's do a micro pencil real quick because i can probably find that faster or not gone too. Oh wait. Nope. That's my brow thing. Well, I guess we're going to have to do a powder. Here it is. And we're back with our dark and our light. Okay. So I'm going to use the darkest because remember we're creating a frame. I'm going to use a dark, the darkest and I'm going to create a nice defined line to start filling in my color gap. So I have a little bit of a color gap right here from where hair doesn't grow. I'm going to cover that up and create a more uniformed, shapely brow because my eyelid and my eye lacks a little bit of shape, right? So I'm creating shape where I can as a part of a technique to detract from the hooded eyes that I have, okay? So don't forget to do your brows. Let's do this really fast. We're tackling brows in beauty school. I am hosting beauty school live from the dance competition, not at the dance competition. I'm going to be in the car um, in between Mia's <laughs> performances. What's so funny, John? Sorry, Kim says, well, good morning. Bingo afternoon. Good morning. How is everybody? How is everybody? I'm just oh filling this in. This is a daytime look, so we're not going to do like a heavy brow but we are doing something with a bit of definition. I'm gonna bring this brow in just a little bit. I do have little hairs right there, but I'm using the medium brown color at the front of the brow for a natural look. And I'm just kind of brushing up, filling in, going fluffing backwards against the grain of the hair to create lift and a little bit of fluffiness on my brow. Okay, and then the other tip for a brow for a hooded eye is that when I when I drew the lower lash line, the lower hairline of my brow, once I got to the arch, I switched from going the under brow line to going to the top of the brow line. So I, and you, you get a little bit of flick there at the end. That's the top of the hairline. It gives a little bit of lift on the outer corner, which pulls the eye up a little bit, which helps a hooded eye be masked a little bit, okay? So, and that's something that you can do with whatever brow product you are using. I do have hooded eye bundles this weekend, FYI. John, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just 
you're just Max. you're just loving on Max. Okay. Oh, I was. So let me show you a little bit closer how I do that. I start with the lower brow line, and I'm just kind of going in April with that darker Milton color. Says, I need this life. I love you. Hey, April. How are you? Um, we have this lower brow line right here. We're crossing over, and then I'm doing the the upper lash line, I mean the upper brow line up here. You can see that my brow hairs where they come out of my face start to come down and grow right here. I'm not tracing those. Are you eating my launch biotin gummies? You don't need those, son. I need them. So I'm again creating a little bit of a lift when I'm giving that little upward flick out on the outer corner. Never bringing the brow Never bringing the bottom of the brow down like this. See, those hairs come down. I don't want to bring that down. That's going to close the eye off right here. You're wanting to leave it with a flick and a little bit of upward lift out here. So we're creating the lift that you need. And that's good not just for hooded eyes, but for mature eyes too. Okay, let's get this. I brush the hairs down. Then... I go in and I trace where those hairs are coming out of my skin. The root of the hair of the brow hair is coming out of my skin right at this line. And I color in between those lines with a dark color on the back two thirds of my brow. Okay. Just like that. April, now sorry. I use the medium color. Remember I'm using two colors, a dark color and a medium color. And this is on the front of the brow because I'm creating an ombre eyebrow, more natural look for daytime hooded eyes. That's what we're doing here today. April says, please message me about, about the good, blah, blah, blah. Ah, sorry. Please message me about the hood eye bottle, please, and John. John, all you do is eat. <laughs> <laughs> only on lives, only on lives. So I do, oh my God, I do April, you're so all right. Those. Did April say that? Yeah. She's April, so right. April, April Milton. Yeah. Milton. Okay. So there, we've got a little bit of lift and we're not dragging our eyebrows down this way to like close that off and see how that hood looks a little bit more prominent. When you, cl when you bring that down a little bit and you close this off, this looks a little bit more prominent than this. This is why I'm telling you, brows are important for hooded eyes, okay? Do you see how that makes that little, when you close this off and we're pretending this is the rest of my brow, right? That makes that we're here, we just kind of fade into nothingness and it goes a little bit unnoticed. All right, let's get to the eyes. So a couple of things. I am sh shedding um, brow powder everywhere. Okay, so good. I'm gonna use, um, I'm well, gonna use a palette that has a lot of different colors in it. Um, and I'm gonna show you how, if you have any kind of palette, whether it's a palette like this, which in fact tells you what colors you should use with it, or a palette like this that doesn't tell you what colors to use for it. I'm gonna give you strategies today for daytime hooded eyes that you can use with any eyeshadow palette that you have, okay? So. Do you know how you would get this off? Don't worry about that. Just put it up. Okay, we're missing our, um, our Black Widow brush. Somebody's got it. So we're gonna to have to go in with, we'll go in with this kind of brush. You're gonna use Typically, at a minimum, you're gonna use three matte colors for a hooded eye. You can use shimmer, but I will teach you at the end how to do that purposefully. But you're gonna use a light color, a medium toned color, and a darker color for very specific reasons. The light color is gonna go all over the, the, the whole entire eye. You're gonna pick something lighter than your skin tone to go all over the eye to create a creamy base and start to be I have to lift my eyelid from, um, get underneath that great crease right there from, uh, from the eyebrow. And so I can take that lighter color all the way to the brow. When it is a matte and you're taking this under, it's helping to also define the underbrow and create a little bit of, um, of a brow highlight without adding shimmer. If your hooded eye is heavy on top, you don't want to put too much of a shimmer underneath the brow like that. April says, sorry, John, but every time I see you, you're eating and you even leave the lives to go eat. It's so funny. He but leaves, John, you're the best. He leaves but the I lives to Tara. go get, he leaves the lives to go get more food, April. 
And also for, to, get, to get drinks. because I've To get drinks snacking. because then he snacks and he makes himself thirsty. Okay, we're just kind of putting this I'll all over. Sure I am I using kind of a flatter brush like it. this. I you should know, be I'm using... Okay. <laughs> and I'm bringing that lighter color to the inner corner. That's going to pay off later. And I am making sure that I'm getting it on this lower part right here pretty dense. I... You, I like to use the um, the Black Widow brush for that. So what I'm going to do is take my blending brush. This is part of my hooded eye brushes bundle. I have a hooded eye bundle that has brushes in it. I have a hooded eye bund brush bundle that's only the brushes. But this is in there, and I love to use it as my ultimate blending brush. Okay. Another brush in it is um, the fluffy crease brush. That is important for hooded eyes. It's perfect for the transition color. So you're gonna now go, you went with your light color all over, something a little bit brighter to open up the eye. Don't worry about what it looks like if it makes the hood look even heavier when you bring it all the way up. We're gonna be covering that up with what's called a mid-tone. A mid-tone, so you're gonna get, have a light tone, a mid-tone and a dark tone in whatever you choose. If you choose a mid-tone warm, you're going to want to choose a light tone warm and a dark tone warm. If you choose a mid-tone cool, you're going to want to choose a light, light tone, cool. cool and a darker dark. cool within the same undertones, okay? Just that has nothing to do with hooded eyes, just eye makeup in general. Light, medium, dark. Okay, we're going to use our mid-tone and we're going to use that as our transition and the best brush to apply that with for hooded eyes is going to be a fluffy crease brush. If you notice, let me take a naked one for you. April Melton says, that's, that's the best brush for hooded eyes. The it, brush. it really is. So this is more of an oval brush as opposed to what's, what is a traditional ponytail brush um, like this. I, I like a ponytail brush for all over, which actually your bin, blending brush can act as that. But I love the um, fluffy crease brush. It's more of an oval brush. It gives you the definite, you can turn it to be a little bit more precise and, and then you can turn it to be a little bit more wide. And it's oh, perfect definition. Out like this. She says, look at John eating away. Eating away. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm, this shadow moon, I'm going to put it to the edge of my nose. I'm going to attach it to the edge of my eye, eye and it's automatically going to come to the end of my eyebrow if my eyebrows are done right, although my eyebrows actually might be a little bit long. So this line right here is going to create a line, and you're not ever going to want to go past it to create lift. I'm taking that mid-tone color. Michelle Reese says, hey. Hey, Michelle, how are you? And Jamie says, I want to see John do your makeup. He pays more attention than you think. I think he does. I think he'd be great at it. And we are taking this mid-tone color. That's this color in the middle right there at the top row. Um, we're taking this mid-tone color, and we're just doing a clean sweep on the outer corner, kind of moving in. And then we're bringing it almost up to the brow. And this is important that we open our eyes at some point during the process and apply this color with our eye open because this is how we are going to see it if we just do it in a certain spot right here with our eye closed and further down when we open our eyes it's not going to be seen because we have a hooded eye right help the so, for me to apply your makeup okay not right now okay um so we're gonna have to go one of the tricks that you can do, depending on where your hood is heaviest, sometimes you can do a domed look, which oftentimes you will see um, the shape of a rainbow, but you don't want to come too close in with a dark color. Uh, you can do a little bit of a mid-tone there, but not too dark of a mid-tone. Um, or a general rule of thumb is to go from right underneath the brow here, straight out, and a straight line like that and then you can soften it with a little bit of a dome or some circles but we're bringing that almost up to the brow and do you see how that has recessed back a little bit of definition right here in fact i can take a little bit more of that color and i can press it in following the brow bone right here this is where the gap between my brow bone and um, my eyeball is right there okay so again with the mid the mid tone oh. often referred to by other people as a transition color but the technical term for it is a mid tone color 
and it's going to be the color that starts to build a bit of contrast and set your hooded eye back. You can go straight from underneath the brow out. Sometimes that's tricky because of um, if you have mature eyes or if your hood is too heavy like mine, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. Um, but you're gonna wanna create this look without going past that line. And this line is creating that lift that you need for a hooded eye, okay? So when I need to, um, I will lift at the brow to mm -hmm. make sure I'm getting underneath there. And I wanna get on this outside part of this eye right here with this mid-tone. We're gonna go over that with a darker color, but we're setting the stage with a mid-tone first, okay? April says, I am loving these tips. Tari, you don't know how good they come in handy. Oops, sorry. When you can go back and actually watch the video. That's exactly right. That's why I wanted to do it on live. Okay, so keep in mind that I have kept this lower part from the midway through to the inner corner light. The reason I've chosen to do that is because we want to we want to bring light to things that we want to draw out and we want to put medium to dark to things we want to recess back. Most hooded eye girls, you can barely see any kind of lower lid. Obviously when your eyes are open, you can't see it. The only time people can see the teeniest, tiniest bit of what's considered a lower lid, which is this part for me right here up underneath the crease is when I'm looking down. So when I'm looking down, I would like the appearance of having a little bit more of a lower lid than I already have, which is why I've I've left that light color after I did a wash all over the eye. I left that light color from above the crease to the lash line, that color. And specifically to create the illusion of a little bit more of a lower lid. Okay, so that's another tip. I haven't even looked at my notes. I'm not even sure I'm covering everything I'm so supposed to be covering. Um, I, I would say like on the video, it does look like your, your eyelids are like a little bit more orange. Right, and it's kind of sharp. Yeah, well, I'm not blended yet. Oh, we're not blended sense. out. We're not blended out, honey. Okay, Kim Weird. Johnson asks, "What is the best technique for a lack of a better lack of a better word? Crinkly eyelids. Crinkly. I know, survey, right? Matt. Nicole asks, "Where and do you blending. purchase the eye contour pass? The the shadow moves? Um, on Amazon. On Amazon." April okay. Melton says, We're gonna take uh, sometimes I hate having hooded eyes. Yeah, I hate it every day. <laughs> Just be like me. I'm, I'm now I'm going to go in with a darker color. So we've used this color all over, and we use the medium tone to start to recess. Remember, this is a daytime look. We're not doing super dramatic. I'm going to take a darker color. Clearly not dark, dark, because we're not doing dramatic, but I am taking a darker color and we're going to create a little bit of extra definition on the outer corner of the eye because that is important. Hooded eyes don't have a lot of definition out there. We're trying to do that with the lift of the brow on the outside. We're trying to do that with the angle at which we create the line that we don't go past to create that lift and definition. Now we're gonna double down on that by using a crease brush. Again, this is also in my hooded eye bundle. Um, and we're gonna take our crease brush, a smaller brush for more specific application. We're gonna take our shadow moon. This is in it. This to me is the game changer for hooded eyes too, because it creates the shape that you want and that you need without struggling. Before I had this, I struggled so bad. So now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna do just some tapping here along the edge. I'm gonna work my way in and I'm gonna have to get underneath that hood, which is hard for me to do. Um, but I'm gonna go above my crease. I'm gonna feel for my brow bone. And then I see how I'm going in between my brow bone and the eyeball right there. And I'm going to bring it over just a little bit, but not much. Now, just a touch more, knock off all the extra. Remember, this is a daytime look. This is not anything um, major, but see how I've created that line. And none of this is blended yet. So I'm going to lift up and I've exposed the crease that I did not get under. Do you see that? Gonna lift up at the brow and just tap into that to make sure that we're getting up underneath there. Okay? If we can fade this. John, what are you doing? 
fade that in. Now, take the brush that you put the medium tone in and literally use that to blend the two together and soften that darker color, okay? And then you can do that at the top up here. Don't go too, don't go right up to the brow, but go like right underneath it. Leave that skin exposed to create that natural highlight. And there you have the lift that you need. Hang on. And then like brush that in if you want like to fill in that color gap. Then you can take your blending brush, which has no product on it, none whatsoever. Take your blending brush and just brush all around. Now, don't be going past that line again. What are you doing? Messing with this. Don't. <laughs> Stop. Stop wow. it. Stop it. I'm trying to distract myself so that I won't be snacking as he Okay, could y'all give comments for John to read, please? Kim, so that, Kim asks, blend, says, blending? Thank you. Blending for sure for crinkly eyes. Matte colors for crinkly eyes. Lies are... Uh, shimmers are going to reflect that. We're going to talk about shimmers here for mature and hooded eyes, like what I've got um, a little bit here in just a second, Kim. So I'm going to show you where you can purposefully put shimmer. Um, but you're going to want to avoid any kind of texture with a shimmer. It's only going to exacerbate the issue. Um, okay, so now I'm feeling, I'm lifting up to get underneath that crease that I missed right there. And then... We're gonna get right there. there we go. I'm gonna take the brush that I put the medium tone color on with. I haven't even checked to see if they match. They don't. Ooh, this, this needs to be blended for sure. If you need to lighten the color a little bit, you can take that fluffier brush, go into the medium tone again, and just soften that darker color with the medium color again right over the top of it. It really helps to blend things out. Then of course you can use your blending right here. Okay. I have nine minutes before my team call. So we're gonna have to boogie. Blending, 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 blending is important. Okay, so one of the things you can do, um, if you wanna give a little bit more definition to your brow, you can use something like this, which is a pencil. Um, underneath the brow over here, it is matte. Do not do shimmer. You can also use this pencil on the inner corner and then on down below. If, if the light color doesn't show up as much on you, you might want to do something like this or use that. something like a lighter color that's got a bit of shimmer to it. This is how you're going to purposefully use shimmer. Oh, wait. No, first. Scratch that. Another hooded eye essential is this tool right here. You're gonna take the angled end of it. You're gonna give definition to your outer eye. Let's see, don't forget brows. Okay, dark. You're gonna do the dark on the outer V, outer C, or outer seven, whatever you wanna call it. You're also gonna use the dark, hang on, to do this right here on this outer corner. So you're gonna start your lower lash line. You're gonna follow that lash line up following that angle created by the shadow moon, okay? This is just the darker color. And then you can actually use it to shade this very outer corner right here to give yourself a little bit of eyeshadow because one of my tips is to avoid eyeshadow on the upper lash line if you possibly can. I'm gonna show you really quickly tight lining. Y'all see me do mascara all the time so I can skip that. Um, I do mascara for hooded eyes every single day. And if you want um, more in depth about that, you can also check that out on my Instagram. I have a highlight bubble just for the Lash Diva set, which is um, obviously I'm hooded eyes. Obviously it works for me. So it's perfect for hooded eyes. Kim Johnson says, yes, I heard that about the shimmers for my problem, but mats like plum, chocolate, etc., make me look like I'm Healing for a black eye. Okay, so try to do something warmer, Kim. Try something a bit warmer. Um, and when you search your medium, your medium tone, start with something that's only maybe two shades darker than your skin tone. And then your darker tone, 
four shades darker than your skin tone, not super, super, super dark. Um, if you have pink undertones and you use cooler undertone things, it could really bring out the purples and the pinks in your skin. And like you said, make it look like you have a black eye. Try to color correct by using warmer tones. In fact, Addiction 9 is warmer tones. And so it, you can't really tell that it's warmer tones, but it is. Um, and they have beautiful colors for all every single eye color, okay? So that's, um, that's something that I would suggest for that, for sure. Where did my blending brush go? Where did, did it fall off? There it is. Oh, there it is. I'm just, okay, so let's talk about shimmer really quickly. One of the tools that you're going to want to use is a flat brush like this. This is an exceptional tool for hooded eyes for a lot of reasons. You can actually carve out a little bit more of an intentional crease and a more dramatic eye with this. You can use this to apply cream shadow, liquid shadow, powder shadows, shimmer shadows. You can use this to sharpen up underneath your, uh, your lipstick. If your lip line gets crazy, you can use this to sharpen up under your eye or whatever. Speaking of under the eye, this right here. So this is the angle that we use to create that outer part. We're gonna use this with that medium tone. We're gonna to bring that the rest of the way right here. And right there. And we're gonna use this to purposefully place shimmer. We're gonna use a lighter shimmer and we're gonna put it on the inner corner of our eye right here. And we're gonna barely feather that on to the eyelid right there. And that's, that's going to create the illusion right here and right here underneath and blend that in. That's gonna give you a softer effect, but it's gonna create the illusion of a little bit more of a lower lid here when you don't really have that. That's why I do my eyes like this. I'm just happening, just explaining it to you today so that you guys understand. Um, light, light reflects quite a bit. Um, so you want to be super purposeful and you don't want to bring it up too high, but putting it lower underneath and around what I, I call around the tear duct, that C around the tear duct right there, um, really does, um, open up the inner part of the eye, create the definition that you need and bring in, and sometimes I have to do this, right? And really bring it along the lash line so that that part closest to the lash line pops out a little bit and makes it look like there's more lid space down there, okay? All right, so that is um, the basics of the hooded eye. What are the other things that I forgot to tell y'all that I need to tell y'all? Hang on, let me put my glasses. Oh, facts. Just consider this, and this is not necessarily for daytime, but this is for any time. Um, use contour and highlight to your advantage. Uh, to to elongate the look of the eye and i'm going to show you a really quick trick on that before i run if i can find the right one of course not of course it's the last one I pull out. um and here's a little bit of a trick if you want you can take the same color as the inner corner of your eye this this one i use in eyeshadow but sometimes you can use a highlighter if you put the same color of highlighter on the very top of your cheekbone out here as you put on the inner corner of your eye right here it will give the illusion of a more elongated eye um, also a more cohesive overall makeup look too okay the other thing you can do is if you want to pull the eyebrow up a little bit more you can put pop a little bit of highlight right there and then back here and kind of create that outer seven. You may, you do kind of a backward seven here. If you do it with highlight a little bit further out on top of the brow and kind of that little bone that curves that orbital bone right there, you could create more lift out that direction, which also, again, helps a hooded eye. Okay, let's see if there's anything else really quickly since, where did I, where did I put my glasses? Oh, here they are. Um, since I have two minutes, yeah, before my team call. Oh, no eyeliner. Let's do a really quick, really quick, um, I'm gonna show you tight lighting really quick. Okay, it's sharpened. It's sharpened. I'm gonna show you tight lining with a pencil. I prefer to do it with a cake liner, and we can tackle that later. Okay, 20 seconds left until my alarm goes off. Okay, 
so when you tight line, you're avoiding eyeliner on the top lid because you want this to look like as much lid space as possible. So you don't want to take up the valuable real estate that you don't really have. So tight lining is a good idea. What you do is you take a very sharp pencil or like I said, um, the edge, oops, the edge, the flat liner brush, that's what this is intended for. And you go in with a cake liner or gel liner and you wiggle in between the lashes. You can easily do it with a pencil as well. You're not getting this on the waterline. Do not mistake putting eyeliner on your waterline as tight lining. It is not the same thing. Okay, I'm just, I'm going in between And I'm not really getting that close in there because I know I don't have a lot of time. And I'm literally painting in between the lashes. I could probably do a different tutorial just about tight lining so that you can really see the effects of it. Um, last tip, white or nude eyeliner in your waterline to open the eye up, to brighten the eye. Anytime you can open an eye for a hooded eye, that's gonna be a major deal, okay? Major, major, major. Joe says, I'm waiting, see you in a minute. Yep, oh, there we go. 9.30. Okay, April so what, the uh, so these you. are my go-to tips. Um, obviously, you can look at, um, you can look at my Instagram underneath my Lash Diva um, highlight bubble. Those will give you all my mascara tips for hooded eyes because that's critical too. But those are my face and eye tips for hooded eyes. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments here. We can answer them because if you have questions, probably everybody else does too. I got to get off. I'm doing private coaching for my team. If you want to know how... Uh, I do what I do or what I even do and ask me any questions about that. Put details in the comments. If you want to know about my hooded eye bundles for the week, uh, in the weekend I mean, not the week, go ahead and put hooded, uh, put bundles in the comments and we will get to you while we're at Mia's dance competition. If you're in beauty school, I will see you at 2.45 today in the beauty school private group. We're gonna be talking today about collagen and what to look for and different foods you can implement into your lifestyle to implement more collagen um, into your diet. Y'all have a great day. We will see you tomorrow, bye. See ya.